Alright guys, so the other day I got a really interesting question. And the question was during an Instagram Live where someone was asking about the biggest mistakes I made in my 20s and what the lessons were that I wish I knew in my 20s. So in this video I want to share basically the key lessons I wish I knew, especially, like, I would have killed to know these when I was a teenager. All right guys, so the very first lesson here is that only you know what you want. And the trick is, or the problem, when you're a teenager, you don't have life experience, you don't have confidence, usually the two go together, and so you know what you want to do, at least on some level. You may not know what you're passionate about, you may not know that thing you want to do for the rest of your life, but then you have your mom and your dad. They want you to go to Yale and go to Harvard, to go to the best school, get the best job, get the boring white picket fence life, probably, Right? That's what parents want their kids to be okay so they don't have to worry about them. So the thing is, if you don't have the self-confidence because you don't have life experience, it's really easy to do what your parents want, what your teachers want, what all your family wants. And in my own story, you know, I as a kid, I'm like the perfect example of someone who showed a strong childhood calling for one topic. And that was every book I read was about natural medicine, medicine, or spirituality. And so it's not surprising now that I have a fusion of kind of like monk stuff in my life and medical stuff in my life. And yet it wasn't until 12 years old I was reading books on this stuff. It wasn't until 29, almost like, think about how much time that was that went by when I had the self-confidence to go after the thing that I knew was the most exciting. And it was because I didn't have self-confidence. But now I feel like I'm actually living my truth. I'm on the path I felt like I'm supposed to be on. The second habit here is that 30 is not the new 20. So the overall habit is remember that the clock is always ticking. It is always ticking. If you're 15 years old, the clock is ticking. You're 30, the clock is ticking. You're 70, the clock is ticking. You know, I had a lot of friends that would spend their 20s aimlessly backpacking around Asia. And that's cool. And that's great. You're getting life experience. But a lot of them did it not to go towards some goal in their life, but because they were like, screw it, I don't want to work for the man. I don't want the nine to five. And so what they did was basically pissing time away just in a different way. The person with the nine to five may be bored on a day-to-day -day basis. And the person that's doing like the hippie backpacker lifestyle may be having fun on the day-to-day -day basis. But neither are really making that much progress towards an awesome life. And the problem is once those people often hit 30, then they were like, crap like i have no job i have no skills i have no income i didn't make any progress in the last eight years i just existed it was fun but i really did nothing and that's kind of a big revelation and i think so many 20 somethings are in this mode that i'm young i got time and their parents will even say that you have time jimmy you don't have to figure it all out no shut up mom you don't have time the fact is the clock is always ticking and if you can figure out the work you love at 20, why would you not? <laughs> like, why would you not do that? If that's the thing that most excites you, the sooner you figure it out, the better. Like, spend your 20s trying things, but always make it trying towards the purpose of growth, acquiring skills, trying to find work you love, trying to date so you kind of find the women or the men you're into. Try to figure out, like, growth. The third habit here is to always make decisions based on love and not fear. You know, I've coached over 100 people personally and well over 1,000 informally through emails, Instagram messages, YouTube comments over and over and over, and I've seen the same problems come up. And you know, the number one thing I see in people that reach their 30s and their 40s and their 50s and they're not fulfilled, that number one trait is they made decisions out of fear and not out of love or, or being pulled towards something that they love, they were into, that gravitational pull. It's getting married because you're like, well, shit, I don't think I'm going to find anyone else as good as this girl or as good as this guy. Might as well do it. Or the clock's ticking, got to have babies, got to get married. So they marry the best person they're with, even though they know it's not really that good of a person or that good of a match. They do the career. They stay in. They hate it because they're afraid. How am I going to make a living doing what I love? What is my passion? They don't travel the world because they watch all these TV shows with news about getting blown up in Syria and Iraq and Turkey. So they never travel the world. 
the number one trait I've noticed in the people that are unfulfilled in their middle age is that they always chose fear to make their decisions and not the excitement, the potential. What's the cool thing I want to do that I want to explore? The fourth habit here is always choose growth in terms of skills and not money in your career. The thing is, I think so many people play that two-year view where they're like, you know what? Oh, if I do this major, be a lawyer, I can make 100K or 150K five years out of college. And yet, 10 years out of college, you might be doing the same damn thing. And you may not have acquired any valuable skills or grown at all or changed. The thing is, if you value growth, you value skills over money, like my trajectory has been interesting. I never once took a job for the money. And as a result, before I had my own company, I never made a lot of money. Like I never even made over $40,000 my whole 20s. All right. And I chose to pick the careers where I had skills to learn that I was passionate about and that I was always getting better. And I was always acquiring something valuable in the intangible realm. And so in the two, three, four, five year window, all my friends made more money. Every single one made more money than me. But now at 30, 31, my friends are usually still in those same jobs. Most are pretty disenchanted with the jobs. Most want variety. They want travel. They want to do their own thing. But now, because I finally found work that I really care about, not only do I have a very impactful life and career that excites me, I also make a lot more money than many of my friends. And so if you view it in terms of the 10-year window instead of like a two-year window, you want to win in the 10-year window, not the two-year window. And I think people optimize for money way too quickly and they get stuck. Now, the fifth habit here is to every week reflect on your life trajectory. So in my early 20s, I got super depressed after moving back from China. I had no friends, no job. I didn't know what I was passionate about. I moved back in with my parents. I was really grumpy for for years, not like a few months, like three years, from like 23, four to almost 25. And the thing is, I started doing these weekly reviews about like, what was the direction I wanted to go in my life? And every week, every Thursday, I would just dedicate an hour and I would just fill out this document. I was like, what do I want to do? And am I moving towards it? And so one of the things I did was I had this idea to do a flow test based on Mihai Csikszentmihalyi's research in the book Flow. So every day I would write down what my happiest, most flow producing moments were. And eventually I tracked this every day for a year. And I have them in an Evernote document on my computer to remind me what the best moments were generally are in my life. And that one little test from that one question from that weekly review, I've remembered now for six years. And I think that's going to serve me for the rest of my life. And I think too many people get caught up in the autopilot lifestyle. I wrote that. It's like the very first chapter of my book, Master of the Day. It might even be the first page, the autopilot lifestyle, the unconscious, like we show up, get our muffin, get our coffee, nine to five, bitch and moan, traffic, come home, the kids. And then it's just like, this is like the dominant energy of a person's life. And it's just like worse than death. You know, it's that life of quiet desperation, like Thoreau said. And I think if you can just do a reflection each week, it shows you where you're not happy and what you have to change. And mostly if you systematize that, whereas each person maybe reflects once a year on what they want to change about their life for the new year. If you do that once per week, that's 52 times you're reinventing yourself. And that goes a long way towards living a better life. All right, guys. So I hope that video helps. The best way to stay in touch is to grab my free personal development and weight loss challenge at modernhealthmung.com forward slash YouTube. And you can check out the last videos here and here, or again, the link to that challenge in the description box there below. That was good.